Uh, hi, this is David, and this is going to be part 19. Uh, it's been a while since we did part 18. Uh, I'm going to pick up where we left off. What I'm going to try to do is make uh, three videos or so all at once. They're divided into 10-minute segments. I can divide them afterwards, and that way I won't be going through as much repetition. Uh, where we left off before, we were talking about the 2-bet and 3-bet and 4-bet dynamic between two players pre-flop. Uh, somebody opens for a raise, somebody three bets, somebody comes over with a four bet. And much of what I'm going to say is applicable to medium stacks because that's where we have most of the information. So most of what I tell you applies to 100 big blind stacks. Okay, A long time ago when No Limit Hold'em first came out, uh, people bought in for several hundred blinds. Then tournaments came along. Uh, there were a smaller structure. Then later, uh, the internet came along. And over recent years, we've been able to compile a lot of data uh, through things like uh, Poker Tracker and Hold'em Manager. But anyway, there are millions and millions and millions of hands now to analyze. And most of them come from this structure of 100 big blinds. So it, it was a lot easier to test theories and things and... Um, but anyway, most, most of what is considered conventional wisdom now, or things that have been worked at now, it is based on 100 big blind stacks. Now I'll come back to that a little bit more later as we go through uh, stack size theory. Uh, but right now I'm going to go back to the uh, two bet and three bet dynamic. Now, uh, we start in a situation where someone opens for four blinds. Say it's a 2-5 game, they open for 20. Someone three bets them to 3x, three times their bet. Say they raise it to 60. And we're coming over with a four bet, okay, uh, which is to two and a half, usually two and a half. Now, I made the comment that you should not bet more than 40% effective stacks uh, because it pot commits you. Now, I'm going to go over this a little bit again. If we look at our uh, opening hand range, say this 100 hand range that we were using. Now, suppose we looked at just our bluffs. Okay, I'm pulling poker stove over. And we're going to say pre-flop. We're talking about suited connectors, queen-jack suited down to 7-6 suited. And we're talking about a suit of one gaps, queen 10 suited down to 8 6 suited. Okay, now these are our bluffs. Now suppose our bluffs run into the value portion of our opponent's range. Our opponent is 3 betting over us. Say he's 3 betting, uh, assume he's never bluffing. He's just betting with aces, kings, queens, and ace, king. Those combinations. So if we look and see, how does our bluff range stack up against his value range? We see right here that we have about 3% equity. Okay, Our bluffs have about 30% equity against his uh, value bets. Now here's the problem if we, if we uh, four bet too big. Okay, suppose we four bet and he shall in over us. Okay, so player one has put 40% of his stack into the pot. So the pot comes 40, and his bet, his uh, stack now is 60. Now, player two shoves all in, puts all his money in here. So this becomes 140, and he now has zero. Okay. Now, we have 60 left, and there's 140 in the pot. Okay. What is the price that we're getting? We're getting 140 divided by six, obviously. divided by 60, we're getting 2.33 to 1. 
okay? Uh, another way to look at it is if we put our 60 in there, creating this $200 pot or this 200 unit pot, what would our contribution be? We'd be putting 60 into 200. So let's, let's look at it that way. 60 divided by 200 equals 30 percent. We'd be making a 30 percent contribution uh, into a into the $200 pot. That means that our equity should be about 30 percent. And as we just now showed, even our bluffs have 30 percent equity against the villain's premium range. So even if he had one single bluff in there, you know, ever, we're already getting an attractive price to call and we should never be folding. Okay, so that shows you why when we're getting to the two bet, three bet, four bet dynamic that we should never cross 40% preflop because that hits our commitment threshold. Okay, now that said, we shouldn't cut it that close. Uh, we should really be operating within a 30% margin. So I'm going to pause it here while I get some more slides ready. Okay, now, now we have a game set up. We see that effective stacks are 100 big blinds. The small blind is posted $2. The big blind is posted $5. And then the opener raises it up to $20. Now, uh, what this is is a pot size raised. And this comes from a pot limit. Uh, the way you're supposed to calculate the pot, the small blind really counts as a full bet. So, and a pot size raise counts as the amount that you're raising after you have called. So, we would imagine this $2 to actually $5. So, there'd be $5, another 5 that makes 10. And when the opener calls the $5, then there's $15 in the pot. Okay, so he puts in 5, he, then the pot is 15. He wants to make a pot size raise, so he makes another 15. So, 15 plus 5 is 20. Uh, this is a size open. The three better here is, this is sort of just like a convention, but uh, a normal three bet is usually to about three times uh, the amount that he has to call. The three better has to call 20. He raises it up to 60. Now, it's back on the four better. Suppose he has a premium range, and then he, he may even have some four bet bluffs. But the normal amount that he's going to raise is two and a half times the three betters bet. Okay, two and a half times the three betters bet would be one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, now we say what we may wonder why is this two and a half times and not three times? It has to do with what I was talking about uh, previously. You don't want to cross that threshold where you become committed. Now, if we're playing for 150 blind stacks, as we see right here, $150 is 30% of the effective stack sizes, and we do not want to cross that. Okay? We showed how it's absolutely wrong to go beyond 40% and then fold. But because our opponent, when he comes back at us, he could have bluffs in his range or various different things, we really should avoid putting in more than 30% of our stacks and then folding. So this is sort of like uh, the upper amount. 30% of effective stacks, the biggest amount that you can 3-bet or 4-bet to, and then still be able to fold your hand to a raise. Now, because we don't want our hands to be completely transparent, we want to make sure that our bluffs and our value bets are the same size. So if we were to bet 4-bet to an amount bigger than 30% effective stacks, our opponent would essentially know that we can never be bluffing, or we're prob it, we probably won't be bluffing because we've already uh, committed ourselves.